Hey gamers, this is Maniac with Game Access. Uh, just uh, showing a new uh, new side of the site. Um, I remember I brought it, showed you guys all those collector editions earlier, and actually I've always been fascinated with um, a lot of these coffee table art books and stuff like that. As you can see here, I have a bit of a collection of them. Um, there, this is by absolutely no means a complete collection of this. But um, I always like these coffee table art books because, you know, they, they had great art style to them. The video, you know, you get to see some great stuff. You get to get, hear some cool information about the games. But um, I wanted to show some of these that I've collected over the years. Most of these um, from, like, 2004 and on. And uh, the reason why I collected them was because it, it was, I, was really, I was really pleased to know that they were actually doing stuff like this, that they actually made books like this. Um, by... Uh, there is one thing though that um, this does this does not count any um, this doesn't this only counts for uh, collector editions that I picked up directly at the bookstore. Um, game collect you know book, uh, art books that came with game collectors editions I did not include for um, for a few reasons. One that I have so many of them it would have taken hours to just take them all apart, open the the collectors editions and pull them out, and also for the fact of this would just have been the full size collector editions. I know Blizzard particularly is fantastic about including um, great art books with their stuff, but um, I just wanted to show you this uh, small collection. And maybe if you can look, maybe you, maybe some of you who have coffee tables, maybe you might give a few of these a look. See. Now this one right here, I believe, was the very first uh, video game art book I ever collected, at least uh, I ever saw on the sh uh, on uh, bookshelves. And as you can see from here, this is this one goes without saying, this is the Art of Halo book. And the cool thing about this book was that I specifically remembered a lot of... Now, this basically kind of stopped at about Halo 2. There was... There's no Halo... Halo 3 was... This book was released in 2004 also. Halo 2 had just been released, or if not, was going to be released very soon. Uh, most of it is about Art of Halo 1 and Halo 2. And as you can see there, there's some early flood concepts. This is, I love this picture right here of the... Uh, the grave mine. These were the early uh, concept of the grave mine. As you can see here, which we never saw, we never saw a fully rendered version of it in Halo 3, but in Halo 2 it was originally supposed to have like the teeth of skulls and stuff like that. And I thought, wow, that would have been really cool. But uh, they, just, they just didn't have to do it. They just couldn't do it. But uh, the early brutes, of course. And the reason why I like this one, this was actually referenced a lot of times when the Bungie was doing their original uh, weekly updates, which they still do for Halo 2. That's when they kind of really just started doing them. And uh, they mentioned a lot of stuff that would go into this into this book. Um, that's how they did a little bit of guerrilla publicity for themselves. So this one, I think, is actually still being published. So you can definitely take a look at this one. I heard that there's an Art of Halo 3 book somewhere, but I looked online and I just could never. I never saw one on the shelves. I I, I wish I could have seen one. You know, I don't think they ever actually did a mass production of those books. Um, but uh, as you can see here, this is a it's a great book. Right, this one's a great book. So this is definitely worth a spot on your coffee table. Now this book I picked up literally the day it came out. This is probably one of, um, I think this was one of my first coffee table books I actually did pick up. And um, as you can see it is a hardcover, it's published by Prima, Half-Life 2. And I gotta say it's been, this is, a fan, this is absolutely a fantastic book. This is completely a fantastic book because it does give a lot of concepts about what could have been original stuff for the game and actually it shows a lot of stuff that did not make it into the final version of the game that actually did later make it on. This was published in 2004. This stuff had concept art for stuff that appeared in like the later episodes for example. Like um, it did show like the original Ant Lion King and Queen which didn't even make an appearance until Half-Life 2 Episode 2. And uh, we don't know exactly what's going to come of it but uh, it also showed some great early Alex concepts, a lot of a lot of cool pages of screenplay for um, for stuff about unused levels and everything else. Like at one point they said that Eli and uh, Alex were not supposed to be father and uh, father and daughter. They were originally um, Alex's father was going to be somebody else named Cap uh, Captain. Um, but um, when they cut his level out, they basically made Eli her father. I thought that was just so cool. Um, and also we see here, of course, who the famous faces and voices are of these characters. I, uh, I, I really, this is probably my, this is probably one of my favorites. Um, this was probably one of the books that actually got me into collecting these things in the first place. Look at the, just look at all this cool stuff. So, this is a definite, I don't think this one's pretty, this book is actually quite rare. Um, this came out in 2004, I don't even know if they're still publishing it, but it's definitely, if you can get a look at it, take a look. Now this one right here, it's kind of hard to make out the lettering, uh, at least on the screen, but this is The Making of Doom 3. This was written by Stephen Kent. 
Stephen Kent is one of the, basically the only gaming historians in the world. Um, the only per other person I can think of that would be a gaming historian on top of, uh, like, alongside him would probably be Kushner, uh, who wrote uh, Masters of Doom. One of the, definitely one of the best books ever written. Um, this one right here has a complete design. The, I mean, the artwork is just fantastic in the book. Um, it definitely has a lot of, a lot of information. The original part, pages of the original script actually ended up in this book of, um, that was written by Tim Willits. And actually I learned stuff like, you know, they were originally going to use, uh, the song Rocket Man, you know, that was going to be like a r running joke actually in the, in the game, but they never went with that. Um, stuff like Petruger wasn't supposed to be the bad guy until the very, very... Well, you weren't supposed to know he was the bad guy until the very end. Originally, it was going to be Swan. You were going to think that it was going to be Petruger, but you didn't. You thought it was going to be Swan, but it really was Petruger. But actually, they just decided, yeah, make it sure that Petruger... Everybody knows that Petruger is the bad guy. So, um, yeah, and it's got some great arc here. This one's great because it definitely goes into... As you can see, there's a lot of text here. It's not just art. This definitely goes into the... Um, particularly the process of, of making a game and what it took to make the game. What was so great about that is actually that um, I was actually at the time writing an essay about the making of Doom 3 and um, submitting it to one of my uh, one of my freshman uh, college classes one of my freshman English class actually and um, in college and I was I was actually this book was one of the invaluable tools I had to actually write that essay um, it actually turned out to be about 50 pages I think it was actually the longest uh, as a freshman I think I kind of peaked because I never again wrote a wrote an essay that long I think the maximum I ever wrote after that was about 35, but it never became necessary to write 35 pages, you know, more than that. But uh, this is this is a fantastic book. Um, Kent is a great writer, and uh, he's really good on video game interviews also, so it's a definitely give this one a look. Now this one right here is The Art of Mass Effect. This came bundled with the um, a Mass Effect Strategy Guide. Uh, I gotta say that I was kind of, I, I didn't really f like this one too much. I thought it was some great artwork, but it really didn't have too much information in it, uh, text-wise and uh, notation-wise. I didn't really read this for very long, but um, it's got a great, it's got, so, it's got like all the classic art book. I mean, if you're a huge fan of Mass Effect, you're going to love this one. As you can see here, you can see a lot of the, you know, early concepts for weapons and the ships and everything else. Let me see if I can show you some of these. But as you can see here, there's really not too much information. There's really not too much background on the games itself. Just, just you know, blurbs about everything that's being shown. I didn't really see too much information about like concepts that just didn't make it and stuff like that. There were some few art art bits, but for the most part, it was just a kind of a guide about the things that are in the game. Yeah. So, I was kind of I was I have to admit I was pretty disappointed by this one, but um, it was still it's still you know for collectors it's of course definitely a pick. Uh, this again was only uh, was only seen with the um, was only seen with the uh, bundle. I didn't see these individually, but it's definitely a hardcover, and it definitely makes for a good book. So uh, again, if you like Mass Effect, definitely pick that one up. This one right here is an art book I picked up from The Force Unleashed right around the time The Force Unleashed came out in 2008. Um, a lot of books, a lot of Force Unleashed related material hit the hit the bookshelves almost immediately. And um, one of them was this book. Another one was, of course, they had a full-size novel, and another one was a full-sized. Um, it was a full-size graphic novel. And um, the reason why I like this book so much was because it actually not only had a lot of interpretation about um, the early design documents and everything else about some of the characters, but it also had early design documents for the game itself and what this game could have been had you know they made other decisions. Like they could have been a Darth Maul game at one point, or it could have been a. Um, it could have been a game starring a Wookiee, or my personal favorite, actually, and I thought would have made a really great uh, story, which they just didn't do, but they might do later on, was they might actually, look at that art, they might do a uh, story about the um, the first Jedi, and the, uh, battling the first Sith, the first, the first person uh, to have a connection to the Force, and actually there was a really great uh, story concept that they almost pitched, but they didn't have a complete concept about it, was that... Um, you know, very, very, very far in the future, they could have done a game about um, the uh, the Jedi and Sith orders getting along finally and having a single council um, with three Jedi and three Sith, and one of the Jedi is framed for murder, who could very well be a descendant of uh, Skywalker's, and um, the person who could have framed him could have very well been a descendant of Solo, which I thought was pretty interesting. So. This is definitely worth a, a look. See, it's got some fantastic artwork. It's not hardcover. It's a, it's a paperback, but uh, it's still, it's got some great information in it, and there's some trading cards in there too. So that's a cool one. 
Now this one right here, this one's a little bit different. This is not so much an art book as it is an encyclopedia, but I classify this as coffee table book certainly because, well, look, it's, look at the size, it's hardcover, it's big. It definitely fits on a coffee table, no doubt. It's got some great art in it, a lot of information. This is a complete dissection of everything that happened in Halo up until Halo 3 to ODST. And of course, there's the ODST squad. I gotta admit, though, I was disappointed that uh, Captain Dare was never listed in the ODST squad um, or anywhere else. I think the closest thing they actually got was like during the uh, the Oni Three or something like that. There's a picture of her with the recon armor on, but that's it. But uh, I really, I really did like that, and a lot of stuff, a lot of great, you know, stuff ended up in here. So uh, this is definitely a great book. This was $25 when it came out. Most of these books usually hover around you know, $25 unless you get them bundled with strategy guides. And no strategy guides that have art in them don't count, although um, I can certainly understand that. Um, any, of, um, any of Prima's strategy guides, for the most part, might as well end up on here. But strategy guides mostly are just about how to, you know, strategy on how to beat the game. There's, there's the picture of Dare. Yeah, that's the only picture. That's the only picture of Darren. The whole, the whole thing. I was, I really was disappointed about that. I wanted to hear more about her, but uh, all we get to see is what her recon armor, her ODST recon armor looked like. But uh, yeah, this one right now, I think this just really recently sold out. I don't think you can probably find it in stores anymore. Only you might. I think this kind of sold out after last Christmas. But uh, it's a great. It is a fantastic book, and it's got a forward by Frankie. Uh, this one is. Uh, this one is great. This is the most recent one I picked up. Um, this is Alan Wake Illuminated. This is published by Prima. Um, this I got with the, um, as you can see here, this was with the bundle. Uh, it was bu it came bundled with the book. But this is its own separate art book, so uh, I had no problem with that, with showing this to you. Um, but as you can see here, it's got a lot of images, a lot of behind-the-scenes history. They break it up into chapters. They show the characters. They show the um, the original styles for the characters. They show a lot of really cool, um, a really cool concept art, but also really cool um, just uh, in-game art. I, I did really think that uh, it's uh, that's of course the team right there. That's uh, the early stuff that the team did. And of course, there's a forward by writer Sam Lake, which uh, that alone made it worth that alone made it worth quite a bit. There's Sam. And he doesn't have the constipated grimace right there. But you can see he could do it at any point. Um, but uh, what was so great about this one was that it actually talked a lot about stuff that didn't make the final version of the game. And it's stuff that did make the final version of the game and what was inspired and everything else. So I've had a lot of, you know, heard a lot of comments and stuff like that about, oh, why weren't people saying that, uh, oh, they wanted to, you know, could there have been at one point um, animals and, and, and wildlife in the in the game and what were other story you know story solutions I mean they they've worked on this game for five years and it does tell a lot of great stories about what could have been some earlier concepts for what the game would have been so it's definitely a great read you could probably pick it up with the um, um, currently it's probably available in your bookstores you can pick it up in the um, the uh, bookstore aisle bundled with a strategy guide um, I don't know if they're sold separately at least not in the in the US but uh, they are certainly bundled and it's a good deal pick it up so you're probably wondering why I showed you all those uh, those books and why I actually had such an interest in them. And the reason why is just because, well, I, I kind of like them because it kind of gave some legitimacy to video gaming in general. The fact that, uh, these, the book, that the games were so popular that they transcended into seeing art books and coffee table books and uh, hardcover encyclopedias and, of course, also graphic novels, but that's for a different time. Uh, it really spoke to me that... Uh, Wow, it's really cool that uh, gaming is actually becoming more and more mainstream every day. So, uh, and and like I said, those came out in t a lot of those books came out in the, or as early as 2004, some 2007, 2008, and recently, of course, this year. Some of those books came out this year. So, um, yeah, so I'm actually quite pleased that uh, that I'm that they're actually being sold, and I hope that uh, the publishers get um, take the, take the hint to um, to make more of them. So uh, this is Maniac for Game Access Net, over and out.